Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Bartholomew Poiser. I'm a conductor up here in Canada, and I'm here interviewing Aleem Chan, who's going to tell us a little bit about her experience with Madomic. So, Aleem, how are you doing? I'm good and great to see you, Daniel. That's online. Really, it's really great, really great to see you as well, too. Thanks for, thanks for talking to us. Can you tell us where you are conducting these days? These days? Well, so I'm talking to you from Amsterdam. Uh, at my home and I'm conducting these days well with my orchestra in Antwerp in Belgium and that's the next coming up concert mm -hmm. um, and after that I would actually be in Spain and France and then let's see what happens because you know right now we're just really looking I'm just living one month at a time so <laughs> right that's right that's right yeah. this new reality we find ourselves in so I understand you went to Madonnaic Yes, I did. And so what we want to find out is a little bit about how Madomic helped you, what your experience was like with Madomic. So I have some questions I'm going to ask you here. Um, I'm going to find them because I did <laughs> write them down. So <laughs> I don't want to surprise you with anything. What three words might you use to describe your time at Madomic, your experience at Madomic? Oh, well, you know, I went to Madomic twice. So it was 2008 and 2009. And I think the three words, ooh, need to turn that off. <laughs> Constant <laughs> notifications, like, Aleem, come now, we need you. <laughs> uh, well, um, uh, three words. So that's the sound effect for it. So the first one I would say it's eye-opening. Um, second word will definitely be heartwarming. Hmm. And the last word is humbling. Eye-opening heartwarming and humbling. Can you tell us about eye-opening a little bit? Yes. So when I first went to Madomic, it was 2008. And I was a junior uh, at, at college. So, you know, it was, I think, I have no, I, really, I had no idea how to conduct. But I loved it. I, I started conducting the first time ever when I was 12. And but I, you know, I, I knew that it was something I wanted to do later on in my life. And so, so I was like, you know, I remember, all right, my teacher back then said, uh, in, you know, at Smith, he was like, you know, I think you should really maybe go to, you know, do something in the summer. And then I just, you know, and this came up actually, the Madomic. And I thought, you know, I was really just, I, I went in with a complete, like with no expectations, nothing. I just thought to go learn something because I really had zero background, you know, zero experience. So definitely when I first went there and met Ken and I was, I was just blown away. Like I was there with, I think 40 ish people, you know, I, that I didn't expect. And then I think the whole experience of you know, you're, you're meeting all the people from different walks of their lives and being, you know, so intensely together for three weeks and diving into, you know, you know, I think four pieces of works that that summer is the first time I learned about Brahms four, you know, and it's just, it's, it, it's yeah, I think eye opening and almost mind blown is like, you know, sort of that that spectrum of words coming to that. You know, it's the first time I actually know actually how to even hold a baton. Someone gave me structure, you know, on, on what's actually how to study a score. I think all these was just, I think every day my head, my eyes were like, wow, every day I was like this. Um, heartwarming, you know, I think especially the first summer, I, I think, I think Madomic really shapes, uh, you know, your experience from Madomic is really shaped by who's there and my first summer there was really I think really special also because I think me going there knowing nothing and I was just like really sort of like whoa okay like you know take me on I'm writing this you know and I felt that combination of people at both summers but I think just you know the first time was just so special in the way that like people are actually so open and you see, you know, you, you can actually observe everyone's classes, lessons, you know, and I think you just see how everyone learned, how everyone got this, you know, discouraged, frustrated, and then get back up again and go again. You see smiles, you see tears. 
that's definitely heartwarming. You, 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 that, that human experience of it was unbelievable. Um, and the last part of it, humbling. I think me be going there thinking, even if I think at all one second that I know what I'm doing, Ken would just tell you, um, <laughs> not really. I think the first class I ever had uh, in the barn, I was so scared. And I was, I, because I think I want to show everyone what I know. And then, you know, I, but I was so scared. And I, I think I took like, I don't even know. I felt like five seconds to just, you know, sort of centered my thoughts. And then I remember then Ken was just like, okay, stop. Your session is over before even it started. Because then he said, what are you doing? You know, just, just go ahead, you know, because I was just taking all the time. Like, I don't know, just, and every every lesson you know it was just sort of being taken like like you know really you're going sort of taken apart as each break and then you have to build it back up again and that experience plus just you know every night you go to the barn and see everyone there studying hard and then you exchange the ideas and it's amazing how much everybody knows and every, how everyone everyone doesn't know how much that you know then you can learn so much from one another i think that's in the end i you know when that big concert everyone got a little you know excerpt and then you worked hard to it and it really brought tears to my eyes just seeing you know everyone how much they have grown how much they have transformed you know it, it, yeah so it, i think it's like com combine these three words just maybe best to to describe everything What's, ah, interesting yeah. in, <laughs> what's interesting in hearing you speak is that conducting is known to be ultra, ultra competitive. Mm, one of the, yeah. one of, like it's an incredibly competitive field. And here we're talking about people and heartwarming moments. And that's a really interesting, that's a really interesting facet. So do you think that's, that's something that is unique about Madomic? I guess that's a leading question, but do you find that to be a unique quality or is that something you've also found elsewhere or how does that work in your have you found that to interact with the world? Mm -hmm. I definitely think that whole aspect of you know being competitive was not at all uh, in Madomic. I thought at first I would I would feel that mm -hmm. because absolutely as a as a young student, and I remember then the second summer when I went back, I was about to start to uh, at Michigan later that fall. So of course, I think I built up a lot of like sort of personal competition with myself. Also, I also yes. felt I need to show that, you know, I'm worthy that, you know, I'm going to be Kent student at Michigan, <laughs> you know. But I, I, I don't know, the place first, I think Madomic just being there. And I remember like, you have just no uh, reception, right? Phones really like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You try like, okay, you know, like yep. not, not no success mm -hmm. um so you can't really like talk to the outside world i mean there are mm -hmm. of course moments you can but then you know mostly mm -hmm. you, you, our schedules are so filled right and mm -hmm. you're studying and then you go to the you know the, the physical like study moving moving mm -hmm. exercises to like salvage exercise and then score study and then you know you have also you were split just into group. you're just going exactly mm -hmm. and and so weirdly like so first you can't really just think about you know telling you know like go to like tell like oh my god you know that person is doing this that person like mm -hmm. no no time for this no time for for I think you really sort of focus like the plays just sort of somehow force you to focus on yourself and the music right and it also so just uh, uh, the nature itself and, and exactly yeah it really takes you away from thinking about all these I would say shit in your head you know mm -hmm. um and also I think both summers you met these people I think I felt in the end it's like positive competition you know yes. it's, it's a way that like you sort of you, you you want everyone to do well because you know we're all on this together and and also that's, that's another thing i see is that i think everyone is in a different place in their life in a different spot in this mm -hmm. journey mm -hmm. and i just felt this this thing that we all just want to move forward no matter where you are absolutely 
so that that also helped me like like to sort of really just put down this whole thing like I want to be the best today you know but I want to be the best of myself today you know that's a very different perception yeah so you're challenging yourself internally and the competition was with yourself and there's this Mm -hmm. really beautiful warm environment that everybody is taking part in and I definitely experienced that as well too I went back twice as well too and I'm wondering what you um what have you taken away from Adamic that impacts your work today because now you're Mm -hmm. conducting all over Europe um and somebody who is in a different situation maybe it's a high school teacher or a, you know or university choral teacher and they're thinking I want to do something with my conducting years later what will I still take away from Adamic if I go what have mm-hmm. you taken away from Adamic from Adamic <laughs> um I think one thing definitely has stayed with me the whole experience was that I think everyone has his or her story to tell. Mm-hmm. And that's something I definitely felt so strongly mm-hmm. in, in Madomic because, you know, at Madomic, I think one very, very unique and memorable, exp- memorable experiences is that when I think everyone, we gather at this chapel, right? And mm-hmm. then then there's this sort of really like, it, I think if it, you you really feel like quite vulnerable and and open and supported at the same time, you know, to talk about things that you know you might not be able to talk about yeah. in the in the you know in the normal in the normal setting. And then in that moment, somehow you know, like with the, again with the whole sort of setting, mm-hmm. um, and that was really you know, the, especially the first time, the first summer, it really like gave me such a deep impression. And that I remember walking away, I felt, you know, everyone has their story and I need to listen. Yeah. And bef- before already rejecting or thinking, I know, I know what is it all about? You know, like, you know, I think this thinking of, you know, we, you know th- everyone needs to be heard, at least given the opportunity to be heard mm-hmm. before we put any judgment on. I think that's you know something very important, and as just as a mm. human being going on, and then in my work as well, you know, t- you know, talking about musicians, mm-hmm. we I think being conductors, you know, we stand there and you see musicians' faces like you know sometimes they like I don't know they give you a little ugh, or like they are you know chit chatting with the neighbors and you felt oh dang like that like, first one must not like me, and or you know, but then. It, it's really not about you sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. I, and I think that really makes me, you know, re- encourage me to actually go up to the person, have a chat, like, hey, what's going on today? Yeah. And it solves, actually, then you get to know people, you know, why, mm-hmm. like, you know, that person might have a, have a bad day. Um, it's true. And yeah, it is. And when there's confrontation, a little bad energy or, or tension in the, in the rehearsal, always just find a time to actually approach the person and talk through it. And then, you know, and not just take it out on, on stage, you know. Yeah. So this is very important. And um, and I think just continuing the, the score study, I, I mean, the, the way I'm, you know, I'm looking mm-hmm. at the score, I cannot see it, you know, not like how Ken sees it. It's just such a, such a strong and structured way. Mm-hmm. And I felt, you know, after, after Madomic, I've also done other classes and I've, you know, of course, colleagues. And often this question comes up among colleagues it's like how do you actually study how do you actually look at the score and you sometimes get to like you know sort of flip through other people's scores you're like i know i know i've had that (laughs) (laughs) like (laughs) Like, i know yeah so and just to and just okay and i think just for people viewing that don't know what we're talking about Uh uh-huh like it's so it's so thorough and so detailed what we learn the way that Ken and the way that Madomic teaches you to go through a score and the teachers that they bring in so sometimes it's hard when you're looking at a score that someone else has to go well how are they internalizing everything 
right? You know, and yep. that's something that I've that's something that I've had trouble. And you know, yeah, I, I totally I totally agree with that. And that this is maybe a whole other podcast. We should like you know do something like how do you actually study scores, right? I like, think so too. You know, it is. yeah. I, I get that. Sorry, so I just, so, just no walk. problem. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly, exactly. Totally because right. like Ken just has a way, and I think that goes back to my eye-opening uh, comment. Because you know we all felt like you know when you see these scores, how how do you dissect it? How do you even you know understand it? And yeah, Ken has a way, and and Ken's way just works in that sense. You really, no matter what music, you take it down. You really feel like a funnel, you know, you go down to the to the smallest, you know exactly what chord, what harmony, what's going on to the mot the motel, the you know, the little cell. And this it, when you step back, you know, then you just know it in and out like this, really like building a house, and you take the house down to each room and then building it back. And and of course, I don't use as much colors as I started. I remember the first summer, Madomic, I had like seven colors in my score. I was like coloring the main theme. And then <laughs> like, at one point, like, my score just looks like a rainbow, really. Like, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm a rainbow. I'm still a rainbow person. Okay. Yeah. yeah it's, it's okay. It's okay to not it's be. Okay. Little. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever helps. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but it, yeah. And, and now I'm down to like quite, you know, the pencil with the red and the blue and sometimes yeah. just even pencil like sometimes just you just like ah, do, just do it but yeah still the same backbone yeah, yeah. so you talked about i just want to make sure because you i know you prepared some of these questions what was the main challenge for you and something that still challenges you aha how about that Ooh, Ooh. Like, from Madomic or just in general, what is challenging? I think from, from let's do both. Like, what what challenged you at Madomic? What was hard? A, a challenge that you seem to be on. And what and what are you, what are you working on now? Like, mm -hmm. what challenges you now? That's probably good. okay. Well, so I think going looking back at Madomic, I think one thing was really difficult was <laughs> it, it's tough, especially if you have like if you form some really good friendships. I mean, of course, you you were really every day spending you know twenty four seven three weeks with you know, same group of people. And of course, certain people becomes like, you know, so if you're buddies and then you study together, you eat together, you play Frisbee together. <laughs> yeah. So um, one thing was really, I, well, it can be challenging and was challenging was how much you, you sort of spend time mingle and then you have to study at the same time because it's such a, it's such an experience yeah. also that you, you get to know each other. And of course that that is you know but of course then you you really form some really beautiful friendships over you know from from madomic um and then of course the most challenging is how to improve and i i saw i've seen i remember like there were friends there were people that was really um how to say because i think you madomic really challenged one to be vulnerable and open and that's something it's not easy Mm -hmm. And I think that the extent of how, you know, how vulnerable you can be, it's, I mean, it's tough, you know, you're standing in front of actually people you have never met in your life. And suddenly you have to go so like, like an onion, you have to take off the layers, you know, and Ken really pushes, you know, he really wants to get to that, you know, moment, you know, what is really blocking you from from the music you know and mm -hmm. and those are those are not easy i remember like you know sessions that i'm just in tears and i felt com completely broken down embarrassing and i felt i'm not deserving them to to be even like conductors you know i'm like you know look at the music i'm like what am i you know but at the same time you 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 have to go through this i guess because it's a, it's yeah. a process that you have to understand how small you are it's yeah. not about you when and we and all, you know, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, like, and then, you know, I think coming from a place, uh, understanding how small you are, we are, it brings you completely different um, eyes mm -hmm. going back to the music. And that's, and that's, seen, that's yeah. what's humbling. Yeah. yeah, really humbling. And, but that was, that was not easy, you know. Right. That yeah. is, it's really challenging. It's really, really challenging to do to be that vulnerable continually and to see these huge, vast masterworks uh, or even new compositions and the composer sitting right there and you're thinking you put all this work in and I just, how, and how do you want this phrase to go? And now I'm in charge of it. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So yep. 
I have one last question. Yep. Um, what would you tell your pre-Madamic self about Madamic? You go back in time, you see Aleem, what would you say, what would you say to Aleem before they went to Madamic about Madamic to encourage them, discourage them? What would you, what would you say? What would you say? <laughs> oh, I would, I would totally tell my pre-Madamic self to definitely go to Madamic. I would even tell her to tell more friends to go to Madamic mm -hmm. because I think it's, I mean, maybe I would tell myself to really, especially before my second summer, because I, I definitely felt that me thinking like I have to show that I was, you know, I was the Michigan student. Like, I think, I think that took me, a, it, it just waste, I waste a lot of energy on that. And I think, again, it was this sort of ego coming in, you know, and, and, because I've somehow have to feel like, you know, I, I have to be the model student now. And, and these are the things that really, you know, I wish if I could go back, yeah, I would tell myself then to say, no, try to have the same sort of innocence, you know, going into the first summer. And, and also it's quite difficult because you know, I think you went twice as well. And, you know, how, like I said, each summer you have different group of people and, and just somehow the, the, the combination of people made Madomic, you know, whatever that year is. Okay. And it can really like, you know, I think it's, but then I think in, in, in the, I wish that my second, before my second summer, I wish that I could go again, you know, with this innocence and not trying to replicate what I experienced in the first summer. Totally. Yes. <laughs> 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 I'm just being really honest here, but it was I'm like looking back, I was like, I, I felt like, dang, I wish, you know, I I I should have like just took took it as as new, as a new experience. Yeah. And I, I remember, yeah, definitely there were times I was, yeah, and it was totally just it, you know it's not going anywhere. And then in the end, you, you when you sort of take a step back, like and accept like this is the group and it, this is how it is. Huh, you know, and then yeah. Stop fighting what you want it to be and to make yeah. it, what you want it to be and let it be what it actually is. Exactly. And it is as good as it it, it can be, you know, but we don't see it until later. Oh my gosh. So. Oh my gosh. You can say that to the to the prima dobic Daniel as well, too, because he, oh. he needs to do exactly that. Folks, folks, this has been Aleem Chan. Please look her up on on YouTube, has some videos, great interviews and stuff there. Um, this has been an interview about Madomic and just the experience of a wonderful conductor who's gone to Madomic and their journey. So thank you so much for tuning in and we hope to see you at Madomic. Yep. Thank you, Daniel.